reaping rewards in the days of the Oma, reaping rewards in the days of the Oma. Our keynote scripture is Ruth chapter two, verse 12. Yah recompense your work and a full reward be given you of Yah Elohim of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. Tonight, as we are in countdown mode for the end of the days of the Omer, with nine days remaining unto Shavuot, it's good to reflect on the work of the kingdom that we may have all been involved in during these days of the Omer. Some of us have been working quietly behind the scenes, for the kingdom with no fanfare, which is a beautiful testimony before Yah, who sees secretly and he rewards openly. Hallelujah. The scriptures say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 through 12, but you do not need to have written to you concerning love of the brethren, for you yourselves are taught by Elohim to love one another. You also are doing so to all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But I beg of you, my brethren, that you superabound and that you would be diligent, peaceable, and occupied with your business, working with your hands, just as we commanded you, that you would be walking in good form towards outsiders and that you would be dependent on no man. So it is in the story of Ruth that she unknowingly worked quietly for the kingdom of Yah. When for all she knew that she was doing was that she was simply working out of love for her mother-in-law's needs by gleaning food for the spring from the spring harvest in the days of the omen. Yet it was through her humble service for her destitute mother-in-law, Naomi, that Yah set in motion his kingdom plan to use Ruth as part of the lineage of mothers of Yeshua HaMashiach through the lineage of the house of David. Hallelujah. Her righteous work in humility was observed by the owner of the field in Bethlehem, where she was working and gleaning in the days of the Omer. His name was Boaz, whose field she had randomly selected to glean, as was commanded that landowners with crops were to make their fields available for the poor and stranger to have access to pick from the leftovers of the stalks after the crops were reaped, as stated in Leviticus chapter 19, verse nine. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, Neither shalt thou gather every grape of the vineyard, but thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am Yah, your Elohim. Also the hand of Yah was upon Ruth to select unknowingly the field of Boaz, because it is noted in chapters two and one of Ruth, that Boaz was a near kinsman of her late husband, Malan, and his father eliminate. It states in verse one of chapter two of Ruth, and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz, which meant by Torah law that he was eligible to marry Ruth and lay, and lay claim to all the property of Elimelech, his father-in-law, and late husband of her mother-in-law, Naomi, because there 
there were no male heirs of that family. It's stated in Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 through 10, it states, if brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to her to him for wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she bears shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, so shall it be unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. And his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that have loosed his shoe loose. Uh, it says in chapters two and three of, of uh, it says in verses two and three of chapter two of Ruth, it states that as Ruth sought to help her destitute mother-in-law, Naomi, it states that Ruth seemingly by hap or happen chance came to the field of Boaz as it states in verse two. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said unto Naomi, let me go now to the field and glean ears of corn or wheat after him in whose sight I may find grace. And she said unto her, go my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Uh, it is clear Yah was moving Ruth to this field unknowingly to her. And though it seemed to be having chance or random to her, her to select this field, yet all this had been foreordained by Yah for her to go to Boaz's field. This illustrates to us how when we seek to do good in helping others, that Yah uses that action in helping others to set the stage for blessings to come to us. Even when we were not helping others for our own advantage, but simply doing it out of love for them. Yet, Yah sees this kindness and takes note of it. And he selects others to see the good you are doing in spite of the fact that you are not advertising your good works as some do to receive praise of men. As Yahshua said in Matthew 6, Verses one through through four, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee open, openly. Because of Ruth's innocent motive to help her mother-in-law, Yah decided to bless her openly in her poverty by bringing her to the attention of Boaz who was a rich man who could help her and her mother-in-law as stated in chapter two, verses 11 and 12 of Ruth. Boaz said to her, certainly it was told me what you have done with your mother-in-law after your husband died, that you have left your father and your mother and your family and have come to a people that you had not known from yesterday and from the day before yesterday. Adonai Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, shall reward you 
and he shall give you wages. He under whose wing you have come to take refuge. Hallelujah. Boaz's blessing on Ruth was that Yah bless her for taking refuge under the wings of Yah. It's stated in Psalm 91, verses 1 through 4. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yah, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So my family, as we serve Yah by serving others, let us not get weary in well-doing. Serving Israelites can be a tiresome process, as many of us can well testify to, because there are so many things and issues among ourselves through the centuries of the trauma of the curses. Yet we, like Ruth, we must persevere in love and stand to help other Israelites and not get weary with Israelites. As it says in Galatians chapter six, verse nine through 10, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all people, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. As it was in the days of the Omer when the spring harvest crops were being reaped, there comes a reward in the harvest when the fruit of love had planted, as it was said by Boaz to Ruth in verse 12, Yah Adonai Yah, the Elohim of Israel, shall reward you and he shall give you your wages, he under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Also, as said in Galatians chapter six, verses six through eight, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. Elohim is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit of the spirit reap life everlasting. May we reap life everlasting during these days of the Omer and life abundantly in this time. Hallelujah.